how do you make this a business? How, like, how did you figure out the revenue model, the business model to, to make this so that you can live off of? Yeah. So I, I think it, it's back to, well, the idea that, you know, with, with the green stormwater infrastructure as the inspiration, it turns out that um, when you now start to engage cities more broadly um, to talk about this, there are a couple of um, you know, pain points that they have. You know, one of the things that's been really interesting um, to, to tease out is that there's a labor challenge that cities are facing. So, you know, that national conversation about everybody quitting and people rethinking their lives, it's happening at every level. Um, and so what's interesting about something like, you know, so there are these kinds of tasks at cities, right? Whether it's, um, and you know, like the litter pickup is different from the, tr the trash pickup, right? Cause that's more like the, our, the standard waste management system, um, you know, that works and we're, 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 we're ancillary to that. But so for the piece of, and back to the pieces of the job. So there's like the weeding and the other things that I haven't really even talked about. We're just, you know, focused right now on just optimizing our model for the litter. But so, so the first realization was that one, um, litter is a problem for green stormwater infrastructure. It impairs its function, but it's also this issue more broadly that cities ha are having to deal with, right? Whether it's on roadsides or in parks. So that was sort of the first thing. It's like, oh, wait a minute, right? Like the this this litter in and of itself, um, whether it's on the, you know, whether it's directly in the path of stormwater or not, cities are having to just figure out what to do about it just because of how um, our economy and our consumption habits are changing. But then, so then the question is, well, who does it? Like who does the litter piece? Like who picks that up? And so, you know, that tends to be um, an in-house kind of thing where they try to fit it in. And so for some cities, there's not really one litter person um, you try to kind of have some education function, but there's not like, uh, you know, a, it, even though it's a big thing, it's it's kind of, um, it's a tricky thing because cities, they do get concerned sometimes about, you know, if they directly are seen to pay for it, it might mean that they're incentivizing bad behavior. But I think we have, you know, been able to prove out with, with some of our work so far that that's, that's not really the dynamic. Um, so for the business model, then what we end up doing is that we we charge um, for there's a service piece of it where we're literally and en we're ensuring that there's a constant workforce that's available to um, do this litter removal. And these are gig workers. And so one of the ways that we're able to now help the city with its labor shortage is that the, the people who are working to do a litter pickup, we are changing how that job works. So you're not outside, you know, at a, at a job site for eight hours a day, because that's the, that, that's the problematic piece. Having people fill those roles where they've got to commit themselves to do this one task for like eight hours a day um, at a relatively low wage if it's full time, it's, it's, it's becoming an increasingly difficult Prop, you know, value prop for that kind of worker. So we we chunk the job, we make it smaller. So we we keep the actual commitment, you know, down to an hour or two, and we pay, you know, decently well. So so similar to um, an Uber or any of the other gig companies, you know, to go and pick litter, you make comparable or better wages depending on how fast you work. And for the city, then the value is that we are reducing customer complaints and um, we're helping you reprioritize how you use the existing labor that you have. There are other folks, the, the, the folks that they have, there's a lot that the city does for, for residents. And so for this piece where re a responsive entity is required, we're filling, we're filling that gap and helping to control what it costs, even though, you know, because the workers are not our full-time employees, then you know we, we recoup some of, of the efficiencies that way. Um, but this idea then of how to staff, um, you know, blue-collar labor, that also is just becoming an increasingly 
um, tricky kind of value prop because everybody's rethinking, you know, who's going to monopolize and control my time? How do I spend my time? How am I spending my day? Why do I not have control of that? And so we are, um, you know, looking to respond to that market as well. And it, and I think, you know, so so for for the workers that we're tapping into, um, there are different motivations for why they're, they'd be interested to to join a gig, but. Um, I think part of it as well is that, you know, for how the world has shifted, it's a very interesting time, you know, that we're in. And so that's also a piece of just the excitement of what we have, you know, for what's next. How can the, how can the, the residents, what did you call it, Zach, Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Chesapeake, Pocosin? Tidewater, Hampton Road, yeah. 757. How, how can the residents of this community, how can they support you or how can they make an impact for the environment? Well, I mean, one, I'd love to get more gig workers who want to join us. Um, so that's one thing. And, and they, go to your, they go to your website for that? Yes. And um, also on the other side, you know, if there are, whether it's other governments or I guess even private businesses, events, kinds of entities, universities that need some help with um, how they're managing litter removal or similar, you know, sort of simple green space maintenance tasks. We'd love to be a partner with them. I've been directly involved within our entrepreneurial community for years. And the most common question I get is, Tim, I want to get involved, but I don't know what events I should attend. Well, Startwheel eliminates that pain point because we consolidate all the events you should attend into a single calendar. Now you'll be in the know and see where to spend your time. Gone is the need to search multiple websites and calendars. Just head to startwheel.org and see for yourself. That's startwheel.org.